Tesla has just stunned the world again, this time with Optimus. Fresh photos and videos of the humanoid robot have surfaced, and they're unlike anything we've seen before. One clip reveals Optimus gleaming in a striking golden suit, while another shows off a stealthy full black version on display at the brand new Tesla Diner. Elon Musk has now confirmed the golden edition is officially Optimus 5 2.5, the next step in Tesla's rapid-fire humanoid evolution. But here's the real bombshell. Musk says Optimus 5.3 is already on the way, calling it nothing less than sublime. That means we're about to see a robot that's faster, more capable, and more human-like than anything Tesla has ever built. So, what exactly are we seeing here with Optimus 5 2.5? Why did Tesla create this golden robot? And what can we realistically expect from the upcoming V3? Let's break it all down. First, let's talk about the Golden Optimus. When images and footage of this robot first hit the internet, a lot of people thought it might just be a special display model, maybe something made for show at an event. But then Elon Musk himself confirmed it. This isn't just some decorative one-off. The Golden version is officially Optimus 5 2.5, the latest iteration of Tesla's humanoid project. Now, the fact that Tesla is giving this version a specific number, 2.5, tells us something important. It's not the full generational leap to V3, but it's also not just a minor cosmetic update. V2.5 suggests Tesla has made meaningful hardware and software upgrades over the V2 model, enough to distinguish it as a bridge between where Optimus was and where it's about to go. The golden suit is more than just a flashy paint job. Tesla doesn't do things like this for no reason. Musk and his team know exactly how symbolic this is. The gold finish screams confidence, progress, and maybe even a bit of showmanship. Tesla is signaling to the world. Optimus is leveling up. But the story doesn't stop with the golden bot. At the brand new Tesla diner, fans spotted another striking version of Optimus this time in a sleek, all-black design. And honestly, it looks like something straight out of a science fiction film. The black version is less flamboyant than the golden one, but it carries a futuristic, almost stealth mode aesthetic that matches Tesla's vision for a robot that's not just functional, but iconic. This matters because Tesla isn't only building Optimus to be useful, they're building it to be desirable. Just like Tesla cars are known for their design and presence, Optimus is being crafted to stand out as both a product and a symbol. The fact that they're already experimenting with different visual styles, golden, black, and presumably more to come, suggests that Tesla sees Optimus as something people will not only work alongside, but also proudly display in workplaces and maybe even homes in the future. So let's pause here and ask, why is V2.5 such a big deal? After all, we're still waiting for V3, which Musk is hyping as sublime. But here's the thing. V2.5 is proof that Tesla is iterating at lightning speed. Think about it. The first Optimus prototypes were clunky, slow, and tethered to external systems. Then came V2, which already showed massive improvements in walking, balancing, and dexterity. And now, V2.5, revealed in this golden suit, is showing us that Tesla isn't waiting around for big annual updates. They're pushing forward in real time, rolling out upgrades as soon as they're ready. That's exactly how Tesla built its car empire. They didn't wait years between versions. They constantly improved hardware and software, shipping updates directly to vehicles on the road. Optimus is following the same philosophy. V2.5 likely incorporates refined actuators, more efficient motors, better balance control, and possibly enhanced hand dexterity. It's not the final vision, but it's a critical stepping stone a way for Tesla to test new technologies before the full leap to V3. Now let's talk about the part that's got everyone buzzing, Optimus 5.3. Elon Musk didn't give a long technical breakdown, but sometimes just a few words from him are enough to make headlines. He described V3 as sublime. And if you've been following Musk for a while, you know that's not a word he throws around lightly. When he says sublime, he's talking about a level of refinement and capability that feels almost otherworldly. In other words, V3 won't just be a little bit better than V2.5, it's going to be a major generational leap. So, what can we expect from V3? 
Let's piece it together. First, more efficient actuators. Tesla has been designing custom actuators in-house, and each version has gotten lighter, faster, and stronger. V3 will likely showcase the next generation of these, giving Optimus smoother, more human-like movement and better energy efficiency. Second, improve dexterity. One of the biggest challenges in humanoid robotics is making hands that can handle delicate tasks as well as heavy ones. Tesla has already shown Optimus folding laundry, but V3 could be the point where hand dexterity crosses into truly human-like territory. Third, autonomy powered by AI. Tesla is leveraging the same AI stack that powers its self-driving cars to teach Optimus how to perceive and interact with the world. With each new version, the robot becomes less reliant on scripted actions and more capable of adapting to real-world situations. V3 might be the first time we see Optimus demonstrating unscripted problem-solving at scale. Finally, design. If V2.5 is golden and V2.5.1 is black, you can bet V3 will introduce a new aesthetic, one that Tesla might position as the standard for its humanoid product line. Expect something sleek, iconic, and instantly recognizable. One of the most shocking things about Optimus isn't just how advanced it's becoming, it's how fast. If you compare Tesla's progress to other robotics companies, the difference is staggering. Most humanoid projects move at a slow, careful pace, releasing new versions every few years. Tesla is iterating almost every few months. In 2022, we saw the clunky prototype. By 2023, V2 was walking independently. By mid-2024, it was folding laundry and showing improved dexterity. And now, in 2025, we're already at V2.5 with V3 on the horizon. This rapid pace is fueled by Tesla's unique position. Unlike most robotics startups, Tesla has massive resources, an existing AI pipeline from its self-driving program, and a culture built on constant iteration. That's why they can push Optimus forward at a rate the robotics world has never seen before. Let's circle back to the golden Optimus for a second, because it's more symbolic than some people realize. Gold has always been associated with achievement, excellence, and breakthrough moments. Tesla could have chosen silver, white, or any neutral tone, but they went with gold. Why? Because they're making a statement. This is not just another prototype. This is a milestone. The Golden V2.5 could also hint at Tesla's growing confidence in Optimus as a product. It's no longer just a behind-the-scenes experiment. It's something they're proud to show off in bold colors, in restaurants, and soon, in factories and real workplaces. That raises the next big question. Where will Optimus 5 2.5 actually be deployed? Right now, Tesla has been using Optimus primarily inside its own factories, where the robot can be trained in controlled environments. But with V2.5, we might start to see wider testing. Imagine Optimus helping with logistics, carrying parts, moving boxes, or even assembling small components. Tesla can collect valuable data from these tasks to train the robot's AI. And because Optimus is built to operate in human-designed environments, every step it takes inside a Tesla factory brings it closer to being useful in offices, warehouses, and homes. So, what happens between now and the launch of Optimus 5.3? Expect Tesla to keep showcasing incremental improvements. More videos will surface of Optimus doing tasks that seem small at first, but are actually massive breakthroughs in robotics. Things like precision tool use, collaborative work with humans, or handling fragile objects. And when V3 finally arrives, Tesla will want to prove it's not just a research project, but a near commercial product. That means we'll likely see demos of V3 doing real jobs, not just folding laundry, but performing tasks in actual Tesla facilities. Let's zoom out. Tesla isn't building Optimus just for fun. Musk has repeatedly said that humanoid robots could become more valuable than Tesla's car business. That's a bold claim, but think about it. If Optimus can truly replace or supplement human labor across industries, we're talking about a multi-trillion dollar market. Factories, warehouses, retail, retail hospitality, even homes. There's virtually no limit to where humanoid robots could go. 
and by building Optimus to be mass-producible, affordable, and powered by Tesla's AI, Musk is positioning Tesla to dominate this space before anyone else. But Tesla isn't the only company rewriting the rules of robotics. While Optimus 5 2.5 is making headlines with its golden debut, elsewhere we're seeing something just as groundbreaking, robots stepping into full autonomy. And that's where Borg-01 and Figures Helix come in. Together, they represent a turning point in how humanoid robots will fit into our everyday world, both in industry and at home. Let's start with Borg-01, because what this robot just showed off was nothing short of a shock to the robotics community. Everything you're about to hear about Borg's demo was done completely autonomously. No teleoperation, no hidden human behind the screen, no engineer guiding every step. This was pure autonomy. In robotics, that's one of the biggest leaps you can make because it means the robot isn't just moving, it's perceiving its environment, making decisions and executing tasks all on its own. The demo was shown at 1x speed, so there was no editing trickery or fast forwarding to make the robot look more impressive than it really is. And here's where it gets even more interesting. Borg-01 was moving at just one meter per second during the demo. That's only half of its maximum speed. The company behind Borg says this is the slowest the robot will ever be. In the future, it will hit two meters per second, which is getting close to a brisk human walking speed. If you think about what that means for logistics, warehouses, or factory floors, it's massive. And the kicker? Everything you saw was built by a team of just three engineers. That's not a typo. Three people. This wasn't some billion-dollar tech giant pouring unlimited resources into development. It was a small, bootstrapped team proving that with the right vision and the right engineering, you can get a humanoid robot up and running at full autonomy. That alone should send shockwaves through the entire robotics industry. Now, the team is being very clear. There's still a lot of optimization ahead. What we've seen so far is just the beginning but they're already setting expectations that what comes next is going to be much bigger. Here's where things get even more interesting. Alongside Borg-01, the company has teased a brand new product that they've already filed a patent for, Borg Pods. If you're wondering what Borg Pods are, think of them as the missing piece in how humanoids actually integrate into real industrial workflows. One of the big challenges humanoid robots face isn't just mobility. It's how they plug into existing work cells and workstations. Most factories today are built around human ergonomics. You can't just drop a robot into that space and expect it to instantly boost productivity. That's where Borg Pods come in. They're designed to redefine how humanoids are used in these spaces. The company claims Borg Pods can increase volume and speed up to five times within the same sized work cells. That's not just an incremental improvement. That's a radical jump in efficiency. If you're running a warehouse or a factory, five times the productivity without expanding your floor space is game-changing. The official launch of Borg Pods is coming later this year, and if the early numbers hold true, this could be one of the most important innovations in how humanoids move from flashy prototypes into actual business value. Now let's pause for a second and think about what this means. Up until now, humanoid robotics has been dominated by companies with huge funding rounds. Tesla with Optimus, Figure with Figure 02, Unitree with its growing humanoid line. All of them are impressive, but they've also been slow to prove real-world autonomy outside of carefully staged demos. Borg is different. It's fast, it's autonomous, and it's been built by a team small enough to fit in one office. That completely changes the narrative of what's possible in humanoid robotics. It proves that innovation doesn't always come from giants. It can come from lean teams that move quickly and focus on core problems. More importantly, Borg is focusing on logistics and industrial applications right out of the gate. That's where humanoids can deliver immediate value, moving goods, loading stations, handling repetitive tasks that human workers either don't want to do or that slow down production. By adding Borg pods into the mix, they're not just building robots, they're designing the ecosystem that makes those robots indispensable. And that brings us to the second half of this story, which might be even more relatable for most people. Figures Helix AI model and it's growing to handle everyday household tasks.
If Borg is about industry, Helix is about the home. And the new update from Figure shows exactly why Vision Language Action Models, VLAS, are being called the brain of the next generation of humanoids. Helix has already proven it can fold laundry and rearrange packages, which was impressive enough. But now it's tackling a new real-world task, loading a dishwasher. At first, that might sound trivial, but if you've ever actually loaded a dishwasher, you know it requires a surprising amount of perception and decision-making. You need to identify what's a plate, what's a cup, what's a utensil. You need to orient those objects correctly, bowls facing the right way, plates spaced out so they get cleaned, glasses upright but not too close together. And then you have to figure out how to place them in a fixed space that fills up quickly. For a robot, that's a nightmare of variables. Different households have different dishwashers. Dishes come in different shapes and sizes. Items can be stacked, messy, or wet. There's no fixed script you can run to cover every case. That's why Helix doing this autonomously is such a big deal. What makes Helix different is that it doesn't need to be retrained from scratch for each new task. With nothing more than new data, it can adapt to dramatically different challenges. That's the whole idea behind vision language action models. The robot perceives the environment, interprets instructions in natural language, and takes action accordingly. It's not just following pre-programmed motions, it's reasoning its way through the task. That's exactly what makes Helix loading a dishwasher such an important milestone. It shows that humanoids are getting closer to being able to slot into the everyday life of a household, not just a lab. Of course, loading a dishwasher is just one example. What Helix is really demonstrating is adaptability. The same reasoning that lets it load a dishwasher could be applied to stocking shelves in a supermarket, sorting tools in a workshop, or restocking parts in a factory. The key isn't the task, it's the flexibility to handle different environments with minimal retraining. This is the same trajectory we saw with large language models in the AI world. At first, they were clunky and task-specific. Then they evolved into flexible systems that could handle translation, summarization, coding, and reasoning with the same core model. Helix is trying to do the same thing, but for the physical world. That's why Figure is pushing so hard to show off these real-world demos. Every time Helix adapts to a new household task, it's not just about proving a point to consumers, it's about signaling to industries that these robots are learning faster and faster. Both Borg and Figure are clear that this is still early days. Borg admits there's a lot of optimization ahead, and Figure knows Helix still has limitations when tasks get too complex or environments too chaotic. But the progress we're seeing is accelerating at a pace that few people expected even a year ago. Just look at how quickly the updates are stacking up. Six months ago, we were still debating whether humanoids could balance effectively while walking. Now we're watching them fold laundry, load dishwashers, and autonomously navigate logistics tasks at real-world speeds. The curve isn't linear, it's exponential. And that's why this moment feels so significant. Borg Zero One and Helix aren't just isolated demos. They're proof points that humanoids are leaving the lab and entering the world. Fully autonomous AI robots are here, and they're not going away. Of course, this raises the big question everyone is wondering about. What does this mean for jobs, for industries, and for our daily lives? On the industrial side, the impact is obvious. Logistics, manufacturing, and warehousing are going to be transformed first. Robots like Borg can handle the repetitive, physically demanding tasks at speeds humans can't sustain. That doesn't necessarily mean fewer jobs. It means humans will shift toward roles that require creativity, problem-solving, and oversight, while robots take on the grunt work. At home, robots like Helix will probably start small, helping with chores, assisting elderly people, or just proving useful in environments where human labor is scarce. But as they become more capable, it's not hard to imagine every household having a humanoid helper within the next decade. The timeline is getting shorter, and that's what makes Borg Zero One and Helix so important right now. They're the clearest signs yet that fully autonomous humanoids aren't some distant dream. They're already walking among us.